we would be learning from what other uh, industry or what the other stream is doing for their students to make them market ready. And uh, we will try to figure out if we can take uh, something from them and incorporate her in our legal education as well. So, uh, sir, welcome to this uh, hot play and thank you very much for agreeing to come here and uh, give us your some valuable feedback and show us the path forward. So, starting from, uh, uh, let's take from engineering, okay, and then we come to the medicine field. Like, I come from a family where most of them are engineers and few of those who are left, they are doctors. So, I am the only one who is loyal over there. Now, having seen the engineers and their curriculum, what I found out is that their last uh, semester is totally dedicated for the project work. Uh, and in fact, during the six month time, they uh, can apply to international universities, they can go and uh, work on stipend on projects, uh, they can uh, work here in industry. Apart from this, also I found out that uh, in universities usually, Engineering colleges labs are set up by industries where they get some hands-on training. Like suppose I am planning to be a mechanical engineering, so there will be a lab uh, which would be taking me through all the equipments over there. If I am not going to be a chemical engineering uh, student, I would be having a lab set up. So some kind of hands-on training can be imparted through the education system. But I would want to know from you sir that uh, what all the engineering? I remember uh, somewhere I had heard Dhirubhai Amani used to say that I would only take engineers, I will take chartered accountants, but I do not have, uh, I do not look at value at MBAs, and I will take lawyers. Because management to Karenge, what you need is technical knowledge, uh, that is engineering and CA Prince, and obviously dispute resolution and lawyer. So, what is it that you? Uh, do not uh, require the students to go for their PG program but after doing their PE they are market ready and they are ready uh, up for grab to do their work. So how is that curriculum design and the training that is important? Yeah, I would like to answer this. This is a very pertinent question not only to Gujarat but also to PGU and India because she has brought the name of Hirubai Ammani. Dr. Mukesh Ammani is the president of our university, but I will go more general rather than university specific. I personally think that when an engineering student, the pedagogy and the course is designed, it should be more focused to learning-centric approach rather than teaching-centric approach, because student things are changing. Students want value for money and they should be employable as well as deployable. Employability is maybe easy to get, but deployability is difficult. So the first point which I would like to address is that internship, as Madam has told, should be there every year. And in our university, after the end of the first year, we are sending students to the rural sector because most of the jobs which we get today are not white collar job. You have to go to the field whether you are a professional who is engineer or a business acumen person or maybe a lawyer, you may have to go to the difficult terrain. So we expose students at the end of the first year into an internship which is called the rural internship. At the end of the second year, there is something which is called industrial orientation. Now they have learned the subject. Now they have to practice a little bit. So they go to do industrial orientation. They get oriented towards the industry. At the end of the third year, they go for industrial training, where they take a project with the industry. Mm -hmm. And I was informally talking with the moderator that we should understand that there are certain program objective for every program. There are certain course objective and there is something which is called the Bloom's taxonomy while designing the questionnaire. The question is more towards the internship. So they go and practice, take a project which is the program objective 8. 
solving complex engineering problems. So they, they take a problem and they try to solve it along with their industry mentor and academic mentor. 10% of the course, whether it is in BDU or it is in the IITs or in the NITs, should be taught by the industry. And lastly, she talked about finishing school. We practice that. We called it as a capstone project or a comprehensive project where the student is sent to the industry. They take a problem uh, from the industry which is solved by both the students from the, uh, both the uh, mentors from the academia and the industry and they become job ready because they are with the industry for six months. If they are happy with the industry and industry is happy, they are absorbed. As far as the second part of the question, yes, all the schools, all the universities should have labs which are scaled up as far as the industry is concerned. So many of these labs, as she rightly told, and I can give an example from my university, is developed by the industry. We have labs which are not labs. I can give you a 45 megawatt solar production line which is there today, which is built with the help of government of Gujarat. BP skill development is killing the student for the next generation AI and ML. Third is the Shell is giving, Shell is a big major giant in the oil industry who is giving projects to develop the digital twin, the 5G and the 6G and also green hydrogen. We have two projects of green hydrogen from Shell. We have labs which are the best in the world. Third best world lab is in the drilling, stimulation and cementation. So today PDU you have many things which cannot be called a lab, but it is really a replica of the industry. And if the students are mandated that you have to do maybe 120 hours of work in this lab which is sponsored by the industry where they get trained. So from the day one they are job ready. As I highlighted, they not only become employed but also deployed. 90% of the placement are automatically happening because industry and academia who are like a railway track, two parallel lines never meet but there is an axle between the two wheels which get connected. Very good analogy, sir. But I would like to know that do you, are these internships? They are assessment internships or uh, initial internships are just uh, where you, the student gets a certificate? Or uh, do you even rate it or some marks are included? The first year, second year and the third year internship are credited internships. So there is a credit associated with that, but we encourage the industry mentor to come and grade it along with the academic mentor. Also the academic mentors are encouraged that when their students are working in the industry, they should go and see. Most of the time the faculties who are coming may not have an industry exposure. They have a bookish knowledge, sorry to say about it, but that marrying between the industry and the academia can happen where there is a reverse engineering and the faculties who are there also go and spend time in the industry. So it is, we also have a great scheme where the faculty can spend their summer in the industry and we pay them the full money. They can take a problem with the industry leader and solve the problem and come back. Yes, it is graded and credited. The fourth year is fully the credit, 12 credit which is there, is accorded to this capstone project which is with the industry and they are given grade based on their performance which is judged by the industry and the academic world. In fact sir, that is music to my ear because when you said even faculties they can go and get training uh, in the industry, that is what we also as a law teachers we are looking at, uh, only not focus on internships of students but also training to their teachers. This is what we call industry connect and we send our faculties with full salary to the industry to become more oriented and the gap between the industry and academia that is bridged. Uh, okay sir, so we will again come back uh, to find out the law avenues but coming back to the medical profession as far as I understand is 
that after the MBBS degree, there is one and half years of internships which are essential for one to complete their uh, graduation degree program. Uh, unlike B and more like uh, our uh, law course, uh, medical this they people uh, prefer to have a post graduation. So can you uh, throw light on how post graduations uh, are necessary and they are upskilling them? And this internships, one and a half years of internships, how they are uh, taking the young doctors to become a practicing doctor? You, if you Now the third MBBS, the main subject of the medicines 
our medicine, surgery, and guidance. Again, the clinics, the basic main subject of the whole medical journey of undergraduates is medicine, surgery, and guidance. So again, we have to attain the similar way in a respected hospital. There is a definite days appointed by the NMC. You have to attend such and such days in the clinics, in a such fashion, in a such department, and every term you have to justify. And one is to register the data. There is a log book also. So these are the things from the first MBBS to the third MBBS. That is four and a half years. And after that, the one year that what you are mentioning, there is internship. There is again a guideline for the one year internship. How many days, how many weeks you have to attain in each and every corner of the medical faculty. From medicine to psychiatry, from radiology to pathology, or all the diagnosis. And everything is written by our national body, national medical council, or NCIA. They have given the protocol. Every medical student has to follow such guidelines. During the internship, they are supposed to trust the patient, they are supposed to give the treatment, they are supposed to do all the paramedical work, they are supposed to do all the ward procedures, but under supervision of some senior consultant from the respected faculty. Suppose I am posting in the medicine ward, so on my higher therapy, there are postgraduate students and postgraduate doctors and consultants. There is a system in each medical school, there is a one unit of the professor, assistant professor and junior lecturer and then the senior residents, junior residents and interns. Interns are on the classroom level. So, it's the same mechanism but in internship you are supposed to do anything under supervision of some senior person. And after completion of the one year of internship, you are supposed to get the permanent registration number by the council. Till before internship, they are giving the provisional registration. Suppose I am a medical council member, I am giving you a certificate before starting of internship. If you are you have passed all the first, second, third MBBS with such and such credits. Now you are supposed to go to the hospital for the live practice under supervision. Mm -hmm. I am giving you provisional registration number. <coughs> Like a working car or, or, or vehicle, there is a temporary number and permanent number. Similar fashion, after completion of one year of internship, the respected dean or college or university give the completion certificate. A such and such medical student has completed the whole internship according to our norms. Then the council will give the permanent registration number. Till then, the council will not give any permanent registration number in the medical faculty. In internship, every ward, every system, so many doctors, so many units, so many colleagues, they are taking their own exams. They see your credential also. You have attended such and such department also or not. Suppose they have not performed very well in the internship, they will give you a repeat of that time also. So in medical faculty, we have a spectrum of clinics, a practical approach, from the first MBBS to I am just giving, I am receiving the permanent registration number. Till then, all the five and a half years, we have clinical experience or environmental exposure all throughout the day. I don't know about the law, you have such type of therapy or not. Just I am writing the same things in my paper. Like hospital, we have three cadres of the hospitals, like civil hospital. Urban centers, CLC and PHC. PHC is primary health center in, uh, in a small village level. Then, after each PHC, there is one CLC. CLC to the urban and urban to the serial hospital. Same question, I think, in the law. You have a small session score and you have a district court, you have a state forum and you have a district forum. We have so many patients in our hospitals, like civil hospitals, VS hospital, any corporate, any general hospital. We have plenty of patients in, in our scenario. I'm just thinking, why you don't 
same your as your law student to respect their thoughts, depending on your department or depending on your curriculum. Suppose you have some students of the law. Our three months of rotation compulsory internship in the rural, like you have mentioned in the, your engineering sector. We have compulsory rotation in the preventive medicine. These are the compulsion of the our council's direction. Thus, I am just writing that point. Okay. In your law, is it possible to send your medical, your law students from the first year to the, some some exposure to the court, small court, or some sessions course or some criminal course? There are plenty of works. It's a win-win situation for the government authority and for the students also. They need some human resources, as like in our hospitals, they have a plenty of need of some people, some medical professionals or medical staff, and we are giving them exposure in a, in a, in a medical journey. Similarly, there are so many, I think there is plenty of cases in a, in a courts. There are plenty of cases in your sessions course, plenty of cases in, a, in a your whole scenario. Is it possible to send your students to the diet? I am not talking about any private form. There are so many private hospitals also. But medical students are supposed to go to the respected, allotted hospitals only. Here, where the education is going on, or they have some exposure to the current scenario of the disease or the treatment. Suppose some law students go to the rural court and they will have some feeling at the three months period. Or some go to the some sessions court or some there are there are, I don't know about the your specialty legacy of the, your system. But in major issue, I have only two words that some are the criminal and one is the consumer things. These are the two things in my mind. You have to divide your own and you have to define your protocol in your curriculum. In this year, they have to suppose to go to the such and such court, such and such witness, such procedures. They have definite things. In an internship, they have to do some character activity, some rational activity, some racing. They are supposed to take the suture, they are supposed to able to give the injection, they are able to take the BP, pulse, everything from the second to the last three days. Similar patient, in your profession, is it possible to send your students to the any, any recognized institute in the state or in the nation to learn something? What is the basic thing? Suppose some bail, bail movement, I, I think this is the basic thing, bail, some, some office procedure, how to file a case, how to notify the case, what are the prerequisites of the case, live atmosphere in the court, I don't know, how it, is it possible or not. But in similar, like hospital health industry, probably you should have a such clinical practice from the first year of, or second year of the LNP or your law students. That is my suggestions or observations as per your law. That is my things. Thank you. Thank you, sir. So, uh, first I would like to brief you that uh, legal education has taken a lot of nuances from medical education. So, we have those types of internships, but they are not mandatory like yours. They are just directory. So, it is advisable that initial years you will go and practice in district court uh, under the guideship uh, of those district lawyers. And then slowly you will go to high court and then you will go to supreme court or law firm. But unfortunately, uh, the pay scale of law firms are far, far lucrative. So what happens since it is not mandatory, the students end up, they think that uh, after having entered a law college, particularly NAU, they are market ready to practice with the Supreme Court advocate and uh, uh, go and work with a law firm. So I think it is high time that we, though we have curated it, we have not made it compulsory in a step manner, uh, these practices. Same way we have corporate hospitals, but our medical students are not, not supposed to go to the corporate hospitals. They are stick to the government's recognized institute they are supposed to do the internship. Either they are trust hospital or they are rural hospital or rural clinics or government academic institute. We have a plenty of corporate hospitals, we have plenty of corporate doctors also, but during the learning phase, during the internship period, they are compulsory, they have to visit the definite period of the time 
any restricted system. Suppose I have to attain 100 days in medicine ward, then I am supposed to do in a 100 days in medicine ward in a recognized government hospitals. These are the institute is defined and recognized by our national body. Similarly, you have to define your system. If they are not run through your corporate lawyers or corporate things, they are supposed to go in after session, after attaining your basic fundamental things in your recognized institute. There are so many doctors or interns, they are doing their job 9 to 5 in the hospital and in the evening or in the night they are going to the any corporate hospital for the learning purpose, for the reading purpose because they are too supposed to attend the, their post-dated exams. But compulsion is necessary in education, that is my belief. And exposure in a definite way in your specialty, in your requirement, you have to define. And probably you have to decide the intensive pressure because this ENU and NLU and there are, there are learned people and academicians to what is the need of the things and what is the need of the students also. So accordingly you just define your intensive and in India it, it is a compulsory thing. In every very global, there should not be any optional or, uh, optional or any freedom. When you are taking an educational course, you are supposed to do such type of theory and such type of clinics or clinical exposure, it should be compulsory. There should not be any option. That is my humble suggestion. In fact, this has been the growing concern of all the stalwarts from the legal industry that students, they are looking to practice in Supreme Court and High Court and go to law firms but not cater to the lower courts. This has been an issue which had been uh, bothering the uh, law. Mm. But you have a public prosecutor also in the Supreme yes. Court and all the courts. Yes. Why are you sending not to the public prosecutor? Yeah, so, so obviously, we take uh, the point. We have government hospital, government doctors, we have corporate doctors, but we are sending to the government doctors. Yeah, so we take that point that we have to actually make that mandatory to go through every step of learning from district court to uh, Supreme Court and not rush back to the only highest school. So that was a good point. But one thing I would like to understand from you that. Uh, during the MBBS, is it that they are studying all the uh, uh, medicine courses and specialization only happens in PG or after three years they are uh, streamlined into uh, their choice of uh, specialized courses? Four and a half years of theory, it is compulsory for each and every student. There is no option. And one year of internship compulsory across the India. There is no exclusion of any subject or any topic. In, in our whole Indian medical course. There is no specialization. My preference is gynaeco, my preference is it, my preference is psychiatry, it's in our mind. But during the exam of the MBPS, I have to attend each and every paper and each and every subject in a similar fashion. There is no option, suppose I, I, I should not exclude my gynaeco things. Then I can concentrate on the medicine surgery. It is in the MBBS curriculum, it is under the curriculum, you are supposed to wait and read each and every subject. There is no exclusion, no option. It, it should be compulsory. So basically, MBBS is jack of all trades, and if you want to become master of any specific, then you have to go for your PG. After completion of internship, there is a post graduate NEET exam. According to your mark, you are supposed to, during the internship, what is philosophy of pregnancy? One is a clinical training to the environment. And second, my choice, I, I would like to go for the surgical part, I would like to go for the non-surgical part. My preference is non-clinical branch, non-clinical means I opt for the radiology, pathology, or absolutely pathology or some anatomy or pharma. These, these are not clinical branches. But during the exposure of that one year of period, one year of internship, the medical student will have some feeling okay, what is my choice of line. My surgical line, then, then surgery, there are so many subjects. There is general surgery, there is ENT surgery, there are the other, other lines in medicine, pediatric, EMD. We are super speciality in a postgraduate thing. Suppose I am also a surgeon. I am supposed to do general surgery and then also general, it's not like that. I am directly giving postgraduate study in a orthopedic line. Or also accept that. See, during the internship, like you people, during the internship, 
they should have feeling they should whether we should like for civil civil things criminal things taxation there are so many subjects for me so during the industry they feel have they have some idea about the your industry about their feelings their obstacle their strain and what are the likings that is my my view so okay we have one branch where for after one year of generic study we uh, go into specifics we have other branch where you have to be master of all the uh, general and then in between we like as a law uh, student where in for first 3 years you learn the general courses and then in last two years you go for specifics and electives but what has been uh, good take away from for us is that the internships which you focus are not very short term which are substantial with actual substantial learning and hands on training happens and second thing is that it depend all depends upon the program that whether you curate it in last semester or you would want to have one and half years fully devoted in that can be done but what is important is a long term internship plan which we uh, take away from this uh, panel discussion now coming back to a more generic or which will help us out as a law teachers to guide our students uh, what are the opportunities which you see for our law students in medical field or in engineering field so sir like apart from uh, looking to law firms and uh, in house counsel uh, like where, what are the research areas or other avenues which we can uh, figure out or even to go for certain research based internships with uh, engineering colleges on their project or maybe collaborate with their incubation center give them legal advices so what all uh, we can see collaborations with engineering college i'll come one by one there is i think the synergy is there is a lot of synergy and i have experimented with this in the past with law students or projects where there is a necessity of working together as during the break i was telling that my interest and the interest of edu in line with nep 2020 is to have courses which can be designed by the student itself today it is not that you will be an engineer or you may be a law student or you may be a business student you can take engineering with music so you can design the course and that's the beauty what government of india has brought now some of the areas where synergy can happen is and one more important point you brought the innovation and incubation cell that pdu has a very strong iic which is the innovation and incubation cell where 50 plus startups are there and today faculties also can have their own startup along with a domain expert who is in engineering some business people who are from maybe the liberal studies and then students from the law colleges first area which we see in energy where a law student can fit into a project is understanding the regulatory issues and working on the regulatory issues on the <coughs> upstream energy midstream energy and downstream energy and here is an opportunity to understand what are the regulations which are there if you have to work in this sector especially in a joint venture egg mode so in a joint venture mode drafting the sharing revenue sharing is very important where a policy or a draft or a contract may have to be designed where the help of the law student is very important and can be practiced it with the industry so that we can see the efficacy of this contract second is that when two organization are working together they have to prepare a joint operating agreement where the law students plays a very important role and i have seen that that it fructifies into very good document which is used by the industry so here is can be a summer project or a winter project where the industry know how can be utilized with the 
law clinic sort of thing develop so that we can have contract develop for the two companies working together. The second thing is that the business students, which is the liberal study students along with the engineering students can look into the tax regimes and the subsidies which are given in the business which can be worked out and cross subsidies can be worked out by the law students and some regulatory framework can come out which can be a document as a white paper submitted to the government maybe the upstream arm of the uh, Indian government or the downstream arm of the Indian government. There are many new renewable energies which are coming like geothermal energy, the biofuel energy, the solar energy and hybridization of energy because we come from the energy sector and many of the policies are not well defined. The biofuel policy which came in 2018 has a lot of loopholes which may be analyzed as a project by the law students and the engineering students and we can plug in those gaps as a part of the project and submit as a white paper to the government. The geothermal policy, we are exploiting geothermal energy, that is the heat energy from the subsurface, but there is no policy for the same. So a national policy can be designed by both the engineering students and the law students and their document can be submitted that what are the legal implications which can have if we extract heat from the surface and how it can impact the carbon footprints in the, because we are talking in the COP26 and COP27, we have talked about reduction of the carbon footprint. And definitely the law students have a very important role to play. The new energy, which is the green hydrogen energy, or the green energies which are coming, will require a lot of legal, will have a lot of legal implications when they are mined along with petroleum. Can there be a field where both the renewable energy and the conventional energy, how can we exploit together? There has to be policies and laws for exploitation, which is maybe an exploration license. But can we have a mining license? What are the domains advisable for the mining license? The law students can play a very, very important role. So in a very nutshell, that we can start innovative projects like this where engineering students and the law students, maybe the business students with a BBA or an MBA or who will become a BBA graduate or an MBA graduate can design projects and then solve the project. I always believe if there is an outcome from a project, it should be at least told to the state government or the central government that we have devised something and have been part of many such policies in the national level and also for the state government where whether they are hard or not, we should be able to submit it and make a noise that both has a synergy, both can work together and it is a necessity today to work together. Thank you very much, sir. So, sir, I think you are already doing a program with GNLU. So, would you like to tell us about it and also uh, let us know how the collaboration with Like sir says, in engineering with the music, there is no luxury medical, medical students like it. It is always medicine, medicine, medicine. There is no music, no extra activity. So nowadays, unfortunately, we have more suicidal rates in our medical students. Because there are so many factors in space. How to deal with space? There are the new epic factors in our medical colleges. Like GNLU, environment. If we have medical students, they, they are not supposed to do any, any surgery again. Because you have very few campus in the Unfortunately, in medical college, the environmental factors, there are so many factors, and now it is very big in our space. And the similar things in where we are giving admission in medical courses, we have one on procedure. Where you are giving admission in any such, any, any such category. Suppose I have EWS admission, then they are supposed to do one year more rural activity in our curriculum or in our 
forces. Why you don't exploit the bonded things in bond in, during your internship? They are supposed to do internship with the respected things with some amount of the bond. It's just exploit the possibility, just I am writing down the exceptional things in the medical and in, in your law. Now the second question, now in the last one year you have started the new horizon in our medical journey. Because nowadays we have very new acts, new policies, new ethics. So we have started the in medical profession, the post diploma courses in GNU with everything in the GNU. First batch is going on in a, within short time, in the first December, they are going to get in the exam. But the, what are the things newer in the medical science and modern medical profession? Basically, in medical profession, we have three types of issues in, a, in a medical things. <coughs> One of the ethical things that can be looked after by our medical council. Some patient has some grievance, some treatment grievance, some ethical issues. There is norms governed by the Medical Council of India. They have definite rules and act. And some medical doctors, some doctors have a problem or obstacle with the ethical issue. The second is criminal offense. Nowadays, the, this type of activities is more on higher side. One doctor is operating something, something is going wrong, and they have a like in criminal offense. And third, third thing is consumer fraud. That you, you, you are all known. But nowadays, to reduce the burden or to make a more professional and with good environment, initially before 30 40 years, it is not mandatory. But nowadays, the people are and patients are very alert, educated, and doctors have to follow certain things like consent the documentation, medical records, these are the new things which can be governed by or seen by according to law. Because every 10 years there are something different. Now we are in a medical profession, we are very strict to what is the concept. The Dr. Parik has given a very nice lecture in, in our medical groups. There are so many things in consent. So it's a new idea after consent. What is normal consent? What is high consent? These, these are the new horizon. I don't know about your curriculum is covered by these medical things or not, that I don't know. But these are the things in the medical profession that one should know as a law student okay, what is the importance of consent. When you are facing or some you have some challenges in medical cases, you could just go through this documentation, medical records, and consent and have these type of papers, things. In nowadays, assault on healthcare professionals. These are the newer things in our whole nation. Before five, five months, approximately in Kerala, there is one female lady doctor serving the duty on the government hospital, assaulted by someone, and she died during the course of her duty in a general hospital as a resident doctor. These are the things nowadays is going very up like anything. So as a law student, you should know the, what are the things in an assault on healthcare professional. I don't know if it is it in your curriculum or not, but it is it's, it's optional. But when you have some aptitude towards a medical professional, then you should know about this assault on healthcare professionals, their liability, what are the things at present in our nation and in our state also. Similar way, organ donation, there are so many things in organ donation, there are so many black things in organ donation, there are so many norms, there are so no motto, there are so many ethics, there are so many rules. In every state there are some difference. What is the difference in a Buddha state, what is the difference in a Kerala, what is the difference in Karnataka? That you should know as in if you have some medical insight to know that these are the newer origin in our medical practice. These are the things, initial age, there is Specificity Act, there is Surrogacy Act, there is IVF, and the newer thing is Genetic Counseling and Genetics. 
in for three months very beautiful judgment by high court every authority should see the amplitude of the deficit in their cases it's not a mathematics specifically that if you are you have some form f missing or some blanks in a form or is a sex determination virtually and you are take up with this material there is a huge difference in a from lacking of the data in a oif form or missing their form to the sex determination in a sonography so high court have specific given instruction to the authority be human see the things see the deficit and accordingly you have to give your views and judgment it's very beautiful judgment you should just go through it previous judgment is different and the now the coming judgment is different same in surrogacy it's a very tricky things probably you know the surrogacy okay ivf these are the newer things and challenges in our medical professionals sorry said in engineering artificial intelligence machine machine learning same with telemedicine what are the fundamentals of telemedicine what are the things permissible in telemedicine what is not permissible in telemedicine these are the newer subjects in our medical profession and as a law students or law teacher or law professor you should have a such type of knowledge about the these things the what are the new things in medical profession other things mental health public health there is every 3 years there is a change in public health suppose we have facing the corona is epidemic health. okay biomedical research biomedical biomedical disposals drug research clinical research and drug patenting there are so many pharmaceutical companies that are doing such type of things when you are entering into pharma pharmacological or pharmacy industry then you should know clinical research what is the norms what are the rules what are the act of the clinical research what are the act of the patenting of the drug that you should know forensic science is a very huge subject forensic science we have forensic university also in our gandhinagar but you should know the basic thing of the forensic when you have criminal case of any sexual assault or any rape case then you should have a fundamental things in your mind okay, what are the basic things you have to see in the document what are the things you are expecting from the your victim you what are the things you have in your charges so these are the things are based on the for some poison case some murder case some rape case there are so many intoxicant case there are so many things in forensic medicine forensic science as a basic fundamental things in law students or law professionals you should have some insight some knowledge about forensic medicine also i don't know whether it is in your curriculum or not is it in your curriculum in the law student forensic it is not basic one or two chapter what is forensic medicine now when we have in gandhinagar national international recognized university in forensic medicine why we should not incorporate some chapters pertaining to the law in our curriculum either it is optional or it is in compulsory medical insurance is again a huge subject it's a it's a very unique things because everyone has seen the in the corona there are so many problems in a patient so in so so that in a community and the last thing is this everything you know when you are disabled what are your priority what is your fundamental right as a disabled person what are the things you should know these are the things in medical professional as a law expert <coughs> fundamental basic things you should know about the these things there is my summary these all the modules we are on incorporating our jnlu post diploma course to finish their knowledge of the doctors when suppose you are in a legal form and you have some medical <coughs> cases like consumer case or criminal case or ethical case then you can contact any expert doctor who have some knowledge like or degree or research about this law according to your requirement 
So we have started in a GNLU with IMA corporation, the post diploma course, which will cover all these modules in our curriculum. Whenever you are in the field or you need any medical expert advice or any consultancy or any thoughts or anything, you can contact any, any doctors who are recognized with GNLU diploma course. That is my suggestion. Thank you.